All right. <clears throat> uh, I think we're all set. It's so bright in here from the window that it really reflects off of like this, and it really makes this camera here have a hard time with white balance. I wonder if I can... I should actually spend a little bit of time and see if I can manually adjust that. Probably can't. I'll do it another time. It's not that important. But we're sitting here at, in chat, at the Hassan Jamuz N'Djamena Airport, which I butchered. And we're flying over to the Central African Republic. So. Uh, right. It's not running yet because I did not click connect. There we go. Foxtrot Tango Tango Juliet. And we're going to be flying at, and this is the one thing I always forget, and we're going to be flying at a flight level of 370. Not too high, actually. That's fairly low, actually, for the CJ4. But it's not that long of a flight. Not as long as some of the other ones we've had recently. So let's get inside, and let's get things uh, rocking and rolling. I don't know why the yoke is there. It's not supposed to be there anymore. That's weird. That's a little bit weird, actually. Battery, emergency lights, armed, standby display on, avionics to dispatch mode. We will acknowledge the master caution there. Parking brake is set. Passenger briefing. Let's see. We'll do that in a second. Nav lights. And beacon. We'll get the seatbelts. May I have your attention, please? At this time, please comply with the illumination. We'll go set up our FMC. Thank you. Uh, I feel like they have, for some reason, they have like hidden this. I feel like it didn't used to be quite like that, or it used to take you there more easily. Let's recall our flight plan. You got your first class tickets. This is all first class scanner. Only first class tickets in this private jet. Uh, altimeters set, spell signs. All right, let's get our departure and arrival stuff set up. Here are departing runway 23. I guess that's all we have. There's no actual departures here. And our arrival is going to be ILS 34 Yankee with the Poco 1 Victor. Poco 1 Victor and Mike Papa Kilo transition. Let's just have a quick look through this here. Uh, I want the... Oh, that's one thing I forgot. Let me just swap, switch out my stuff here, and I also need to switch the controls for the throttle over. I really wish... I gotta. I guess I gotta just assign these all to SPAD, because it's a little bit tiresome to have to go into the settings in the flight simulator just to tell it to change the controls again, because it's not so smart. And of course, I gotta go through this fucking long list because UI is hard, guys. Okay, I want the lower menu. Give me plan mode. There we go. Let me just have a quick look here. Let's get rid of these discontinuities. It's a pretty direct flight, to be honest. And it is a bit of a weird... <laughs> what the fuck's happening there? That looks like more of a cluster than it should be. We should just be going straight over and then turning around. Yeah, I mean, I can't speak to real aviation. I don't know how awkward real aviation is. <laughs> this certainly seems... 
a bit more awkward than it needed to be, but actually I guess that is right. Oh, I guess we'll find out when we get down there. Um, let's get our performance uh, set for the takeoff. All right, let's get a look at the weather. Weather. Let's request some terminal weather for Foxtrot Tangy 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 <laughs> Tangy Tangy Juliet. Okay, what are we at? 220 at 7 and 30 degrees. 220 at 7, 30 degrees. And 1009. Two twenty seven thirty degrees outside temperature Q and H zero one zero zero nine. Okay. That's good. All good here. So we get to go to the next page. There's the V-speed. Send those to the PFD, please, and we're good. That means we're ready for the actual aviation stuff. Is f the super fucking bullshit. Yeah, I mean, it wouldn't surprise me. Would not surprise me one bit. Um, we are ready for cockpit to ground. Push back here. Time. We will be ready shortly. Roger. We are going to runway 23, which, oh, geez, we're on the military apron. That's what I picked. We're going all the way to the end of the runway and then back around. That's great. Uh, okay. Guess that's what we chose for some reason. I really need to pay a little bit more attention as to what uh, gate I uh, put myself at when we start things here. Uh, let's open these button guards. Does that sound? Is that the guy? Okay. Cockpit to ground. Go ahead, flight tech. We are ready for pushback and engine start. Roger. Release the parking brakes, please. Parking brakes released. Pushing back. You are clear behind, and you can start your engines at your discretion. So that's, that's where we want to go, that little path there, I think. Pushback complete. Set parking brakes, please. Parking brakes set. Roger. Okay, the tow bar is disconnected and the equipment is clear. We will see you on the left side with the pin. Thanks, and you can disconnect and go to hand signals. Thanks. Have a good flight. See you later. Okay, once that engine fires, spins all the way up, we are ready to taxi. We got a long way to go. For some reason, yeah, we started at the military apron. I guess I should check that next time. Checking for flight controls. Looking good. And so they do not work in this view. Yeah, okay. Just so interesting.
Actually, I do want to do... Let's do this uh, passenger briefing. May I have your attention, please? We will be taking off shortly. Please turn off all portable electronic devices, stow tables, secure luggage, and loose articles. Ensure your seat is in the upright and outboard position. Extend your headrest and fasten your lap belt and shoulder harness. Thank you. Rain on there. What else do we need? TCAS we have, crew briefings we've set, uh, trims we can set for takeoff, flaps we'll get to uh, when we get to the end of the runway, pedo heats will get there as well, and landing lights and strobe. Well, the strobe can come on very quickly because we're going to be taxing down the runway. I don't know why the simulator insists on having like vehicles drive up and down the runway. There's a minivan in front of us on an active runway, and just uh, yesterday when I was taking off in a in an Airbus A320 Neo, <laughs> as I'm on takeoff at like 100 knots just before rotate, there is like a tug just casually strolling along the runway. I mean, it, there's thankfully no collision detection, but Jesus. I feel like the simulator should have uh, designated some of these as not actual, like, drivable roads. As in, this is not where you can drive your minivan, or your bus, fire engine, tug, whatever. None of it really other than airplanes on here, please. So it looks like we're going to be taking off and then immediately making it will be a left turn. Yeah. yeah, fuel truck, that's always good, yep. <laughs> that's what you want to run into as you're taking off. Get some lights on. It's late afternoon here. The weather is real weather, which is apparently quite uh, crappy. It's just overcast. Should be nice once we get over the clouds, though which doesn't take that long with this particular jet. So, uh, we can go and get the pedos on. We'll get the flaps. We'll get the GA button. And we'll switch over from taxi to landing lights when we get to the end. And then we should be ready for our takeoff. We'll climb at uh, 240 knots, all the way to 37,000 feet. Okay, that's taxi lights off, landing lights on, flaps 15. Let's get ourselves lined up. Mm -hmm. 
We are ready to go. We will go to an altitude. I don't believe that there were any sort of altitude restrictions, so we'll do a dial in flight level 370 right away. We'll deal with the f speed and flight level change once we take off. But we are now, quick look at the checklist. We are now good to go. And rotate. Little change, 240. LMAF, autopilot. Flaps are up, gears up. So on takeoff speed, we can pull that back a little bit here to climb speed, climb power. And I believe we are rocking and rolling. We might have some precipitation in that those clouds ahead of us. We will see. Turn on the weather radar in case we need any anti-ice protection. It's 10,000 feet. Landing lights come off. Belt signs can come off. Pretty happy with that departure. That worked quite well. No issues there. After takeoff, check off. After takeoff, checklist complete. Put that guy away. Get some music on. Yeah, I, I quite I quite enjoy putting stuff together in Foundry. Did you see my token in Discord? I hope that works for you. If not, I can get you a different one. But yeah, tinkering with Foundry stuff is, is cool. I really quite enjoy the uh, different atmosphere that Cyberpunk provides. Quick. 
Let's put the anti-ice on just in case. Just as we go through these clouds here. Yeah, it's a nice distraction. It's 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 more than just a different story. It's also just some different mechanics. So, should be good. I started reading just a little bit of the the Kickstart book thing, the PDF you shared. It's just reading a little bit this morning, just about some of the backstories and all that. So, it's fun. I'm looking forward to next weekend. I quite <laughs> quite enjoy uh, coming on and and just playing. It's good fun. It's usually not too much of a pain, but sometimes it gets a bit uh, a bit challenging. <clears throat> Especially the high level stuff, honestly, the higher level stuff is much more difficult to to figure out. Can't see anything. Uh, we'll just sit in the cabin in the back. Yeah, but on the flip side, with uh, um, high-level characters, you have to challenge them differently. Otherwise, it just turns into, like, you know, you have 150 hit points, here's an enemy that has 300 hit points, enjoy. It just turns into a slog fest, which is not all that interesting all the time. Sometimes, yes, but it's more fun to have, like, interesting abilities or stuff like that. That's good, that's good. I actually thought about continuing my Cyberpunk 2077 game uh, after for after yesterday's session. I never got that far into it, but I don't know. This, this has me wanting to continue it some more just to get into that setting. Just gonna find the time to do it. Maybe I'll do some tonight, actually. Yeah, exactly. Get in the cyberpunk zone. Exactly. <clears throat> Weather is just continues to be extremely poor here in Central Africa for some reason. Lots of high level clouds and thunderstorms. Apparently, no precipitation, though, judging by the uh, lack of anything on the weather radar.
Yeah, I made this one myself. Yeah. And because it's my world tour, what I do, I have to catch up a little bit, but I... I, uh, I put stickers of every country that I've, uh, visited on here, on the door, so, you know, that continues to grow. I sort of think of it as, like, as I'm flying to each country, you know, slap one of those travel stickers on the, that people put on, used to put on their suitcases. I definitely stole that idea of some dude on Reddit, but, um, I think he was putting it on like a web page or something, I decided to actually put it on the airplane. The idea is by the end of it, that door and whatever else, maybe another door will be covered in, in stickers of all the countries I've been to. I think I've been to about, I guess this is like 54, so I guess I've been to about 53 countries so far on the tour. I've been on a couple other ones and like other flights, but I, I didn't count those. I think we're about to break out of these nasty clouds. Get some blue skies, maybe just, we're just going through 37,000 feet, so we might just get out of the clouds. I guess technically this does have a flight level 230 restriction? I don't know why that's marked specifically. Maybe that's just an estimation. <laughs> you know, I did that with um I did that with digital stuff. Um when I first started 
DMing our campaign, I found so many people on Patreon that were creating maps, creating tokens, creating, you know, all these things. I spent a lot of money on it and a lot of uh, a lot of bites of maps and images and, and stuff like that. Little stories, adventures, uh, magic items, lots of great stuff. Uh, fortunately, that doesn't take up any physical space because as we're looking to move, like, I'm going to have to start at some point actually purging some things because I, I tend to have a lot of shit around. But it's a f it's a, it's amazing how much great stuff is out there on Patreon, Kickstarter, and the various places. So many talented people putting their stuff up, which is great to see because you can actually reward them for their uh, for their creativity and their work and all that stuff. So it's nice. And it's it's something I never really noticed before, right? Like if unless you're in it, you don't you don't make. You're not really aware of that until you start looking into it. Music, that was another one I subscribed to several Patreon uh, folks just to get access to because I stream it, so I didn't want to use, you know, licensed music from, from video games and stuff, which lots of people do, right? Skyrim music and stuff like that, which is great. Witcher 3 soundtrack, but you can't really put that on Twitch. So most of the music that I have in the game that we play is just from, like, artists on Patreon and stuff. Ooh, custom sculpt them. Jeez. Now that's high-end. And there sure is a big push from Amazon about this p new world game that's coming out in a couple days. All I see is retweets from all those guys that I used to watch on Twitch that used to stream Daisy and all that that kind of genre. It's, it's amazing how uh, they're all ads, of course. They're tagged as such too, but the whole group, I guess, they're putting on a giant thing. I played it like a year ago when there was a closed beta and it it was all right. It had some weird elements to it. I haven't looked at it since. I kind of like the idea of it. Um but we'll see. I'm not a big fan of having to join like a giant guild or something to to accomplish things. Yeah, that's good. Um I'll probably check it out at some point. Seems like the kind of game that my group, you know, Rumpo, Dusty, and, and the like, we, we would get into that kind of game. If there's not too much bullshit with PvP and stuff like that. I know there is a PvP portion of it, but if, if there's not too much of it, it might be interesting. They also, I also said that about Valheim. That seemed like a great game to play, but we never got into it. Who's got the time? Palia? What game is that? Fantasy farming game. <laughs> Does sound good though.
So this would be your view in the first class cabin of this jet. Pretty fancy if you look at it. Nice leather seats. Some sort of walnut covering on the sides for the cup holders. Yeah, it's fancy. You know, I've never had the Red Breast 21, but I'm just looking it up. That looks like a nice scotch. Or whiskey. Yeah, that's it's it seems like a special occasion kind of drink. <laughs> These clouds are not uh, not letting up anytime soon, eh?
Hey, Sean. Uh, flight so far has been flawless. Absolutely no issue. The weather is just not super great. Not much to look at. Kind of waiting for these... Uh, you kind of barely make out there's land somewhere, some 37,000 feet below us. I'm waiting for the clouds to disappear. Otherwise, you know, I mean, it's the, it's the CJ4. It's like... It's like butter. Super easy to fly. Oh my goodness, the Formula Dank subreddit is on fire today after that race. I think every pilot enjoys easy to fly. <laughs> Generally, you don't really want a whole lot of excitement. They do. Some of it's just really funny. I just like all the memes people are making. And they are not Hamilton fans there. <laughs> You know, I don't know if it can. <clears throat> I've certainly seen some lightning strike really close. But I don't actually know if it would ever happen or do anything. Um, I have yet to look into the failure options. I feel like the way failures work in the simulator is that you have to enable a specific failure ahead of, like at the start of the flight, and then it will happen at some point, which seems kind of like you're just sitting here waiting for the failure to happen, which doesn't seem that great. I would. I wouldn't mind having the ability to, like, turn on some percentage chance of failures, but I, I also, I don't know, it would make it much more stressful. Um, let's see. Apparently, usually when planes hit, get hit by lightning, um, it's not a problem anyway. But yeah, I don't think they have that built into the simulator, not from what I can see.
Yeah, I think if it were to randomly occur, you know, that would be fine. Because if you know it's happening at some point, it, it's not really the same, right? Like, what's what's the point? I mean, I could just make my own. Like, oh, I want to simulate an engine failure and just cut the fuel pumps or something. Oh god, this one. I like this one. Will this show up? <laughs> Michael, I sent you an email. I love that. I don't know if you heard that during the during the race, like right at the start. <clears throat> I feel for that Michael guy, the race director, because it feels like he is sort of the referee, and everybody just comes yelling to him about stuff. Oh no. Yeah, you did hear that. Michael doesn't check email so anyway, so piss off. Apparently piss off is foul language, but I can still see it and I'm gonna repeat it. And then I think more than anything, to add insult to injury, hopefully not a serious injury to Verstappen, is the fact that Hamilton, of course, came back and won the damn thing. Like, the 10 seconds wasn't a very harsh penalty at all. I The, the foul language stuff is super over the top. I should probably turn that off, actually. I just, I don't, uh, I'll try to figure out how to get there. It's the default, like, setting. Yeah, go away, I don't want to convert my clips to TikTok. What the hell, Streamlabs? Mmm, Cloudbot. And uh, word protection, restrict words. Let's turn off word protection. But most of the other protections, except for link protection, off anyway. Yeah, <laughs> I I added that bot to help out with temperatures because I got tired of having to convert Fahrenheit to Celsius and vice versa or whatever. But apparently it does other things. Uh, yeah. We've got 20 minutes till top of descent. Oh, no, we actually do have a little bit of weather on the radar there. Okay. Do we have, like, a tailwind? No, we have a headwind. Country least affected by light pollution along with Madagascar. Oh man. Those pristine night skies with no light pollution, they're, they're so amazing, when, especially when you're not used to them. 
I remember this is quite a long time ago when I was in uh, living in Vernon in the Okanagan and it's like the interior of BC I visited a friend of mine who bought a house uh, and he bought it sort of out in the middle of nowhere a little bit but when you got there in the evening you could see st uh, stars all over the place because there were very few buildings around there was very few very little light pollution I mean, that would be hard to say because I already speak German. So I, w I wouldn't really be able to tell if that was a side effect from the vaccine. Uh, but my girlfriend doesn't speak any German and she got her vaccine, so I don't think that had anything to do with it. I think that one is probably just a weird hoax. It does not seem real. Definitely not real. Well, it looks like some of the clouds are starting to uh, let up a little bit. See a little bit more of the horizon. Harry Price has agreed to waive his no movement clause. Wow. So So the Kraken could end up with Carey Price as their starter and like hold B as their backup if they really wanted to. What would he do? I don't know I'm not sure I understand why he would do that. Unless he really doesn't like it there, but he's been there like all his career. Maybe he wants to be close. Isn't he from BC? I think he is, right? Maybe he just wants to be closer to like 
home. That's the only thing I can think of. Well, there must, there must, yeah, there must be something. I guess if he waves his NMC, that means they can leave him unprotected and use, you know, protect somebody else, right? And then if they have some sort of deal with Seattle that they're not going to take him, they can keep him, but just leave him unprotected. Yeah, he's from Vancouver, yeah. It's got to be, it's got to be tough. I mean, to make that decision, do you take someone like Price on with the contract that he's got? But I mean, he's, it kind of gives you like a few years of one position you absolutely don't have to worry about and that must be kind of nice, but My guess is they don't take him, but who knows? <laughs> uh, well, before this uh, price thing, I would have said we're probably going to lose Holtby because I feel like Seattle would probably just take him. Um, I looked at the list of the players we p were protecting, and I was <laughs> I was struggling to think of good players that were left unprotected that I would be concerned about losing. So, um, no. I should look at the actual, uh, let's see. Let's see, according to the Daily Hive, Canucks likely to lose one of these five players in Seattle draft. Um, So, Vertanen, Ferland, Louis Erickson, Jay Beagle, Roussel. Those are unprotected. Braden Holtby. So, I mean, that's what I kind of figured. If, if they're not taking Carey Price, I think I would take Braden Holtby. Matthew Highmore. I don't know who that is. Cole Lind. Okay, he was the 33rd overall pick four years ago. Meh. Jonah Gadjevich. Meh. Zach McEwen. Okay, well, if they take Zach McEwen, they might get a decent... He doesn't He doesn't do points, but he's kind of a... Uh, a little... T 
tough pain in the ass kind of player. Alex Edler is heading to free agency instead of resigning. That's fine. Maybe we'll sign Zach Hyman, according to this article. I don't know. I don't really think we have anybody. Like, I would love for them to take Louis Erickson off our hands. <laughs> it's not going to happen. <laughs> we don't really have any players out there that are unprotected, except for maybe Zach McEwen that would... I mean, I wouldn't lose sleep over it either. It's whatever. You're going to lose somebody in an expansion draft. And if you have a crappy team, chances of losing a crappy player are greater, so we got that going for us. That's been the long-term plan all along. Let's just have a crappy team so we don't lose anything good. Yeah, I, I hope that it's not going to be as overpowered of a team as Vegas was, you know, we'll see. I could jump into that tonight, actually, if nobody's doing anything else, if you're doing that. That would be fine, too. I'm looking to play something easy going this evening. That I was going to play some Cyberpunk 70, 2077, maybe, after, after this flight for a little bit. I haven't touched that in ages, but we started doing the Cyberpunk campaign with Scanner, so kind of want to get into that genre a little bit, get my head in the game. We're not very likely to forget about, like, forget how the game works, though. <clears throat> Spoken like a true family, man. I'm off on vacation this week, so I won't be around to play. Whereas it's like the opposite of somebody without kids. Like, I'm on vacation, I've got all the time in the world to play games. I guess you're gonna have to entertain, do vacation stuff with family. You got any any plans, or are you still just uh, doing house stuff? campground. That sounds nice.
sure the I'm sure the family will enjoy that. I don't know why, it's like quarter after two in the afternoon, but somebody is barbecuing something outside. And it smells really delicious. But it's confusing my brain because it's like, it's not really food time. Do you do camping like in, a, in an RV or in a trailer or are you camping like proper tents and stuff? Tents, campfires, s'mores, that kind of thing? What, what kind of camper are you? Oh, that sounds, that sounds like fun actually. Renting a place on the beach with tons of parks activities to do. How long are you going for? As I get myself ready for the uh, uh, our arrival here, what are we arriving through? Hokot. Who got at 5,000? Really? Yeah? Alright. Cool. And then after that it will be 3,600, so let's go down to... Let's see. What are we capturing glide? So at 3,000, perfect. We got 3,000 in there. We just gotta hit the VNAF button as soon as we get to the top of the set. Rent a house trailer. Oh, that's nice. <laughs> that's honestly a lot easier than tent camping. Tent camping is fun, but you have to deal with all the stuff that comes with it. A house trailer, that seems, you know, a bit easier, especially if the weather maybe doesn't cooperate or something. Five days. That sounds. That sounds nice. I hope you'll enjoy that. Hopefully it's not, uh, hopefully it's enjoyable for you too. Alright, so let's see, what do we need for our descent? Uh, for our... Approach performance, we're going to need to get wind and all that stuff. All right, so let's see if we can get that from data link. Weather for Foxtrot Echo, Foxtrot, Foxtrot. Send it. View it. What do we got? No wind. 24 degrees and 10, 12. 24 and 10, 12. Forty four degrees ten twelve for that. There we go. All set. Once we hit this top of the scent, we'll just uh ease back on the throttle. Make sure we can get ourselves down there. <coughs> And we'll start thinking about minimums once we've done that. We'll get those dialed into the PFD. Uh, I forgot. I always forget to go to the second page and send the V-speeds to the PFD. There we go. Looks like we're going to be going through some more clouds.
Uh, we'll see how we do with this. The throttle at about 56 and 1.
Well, maybe there's an opening in the clouds here for us to dive down through. I don't know if we're going to get below that before they start again, but there is a nice little hole here. Yes, it's not going to tell us a transition altitude, is it? Oh, it is. A transition altitude, 4,200. All right. Can we put that into the pro things? The approach? No, this one does not have that, does it? No. Okay, but... Uh, Quick look at our minimums. Uh, Thirteen eighty two. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll show that in this, and just need to increase this a little bit. Thirteen eighty, I guess, is the closest we're going to get to that. So transition altitude is only forty two hundred. Well, at least we're rid of the clouds. Are there any speed limits? Uh, not that I can see. Flight level 50, descent to 3600. We're doing that. All 
All right, we're slowing down nicely. We're getting just to the 250 knot mark, which we want to be at when we get to below 10,000 feet of flight level 100. I'm tempted to dial in the localizer myself, but usually the CJ4 has this right. What I'm going to do is I am going to put it in the standby. One ten decimal three, so that if I do need to do something, I could easily switch that over. It usually does it itself, but we'll keep an eye on it. Yet more lightning strikes. The landing lights on. Think we need to worry about weather anymore. We can get the terrain on there. Though. Loke will be tuned, okay. So we're gonna trust it. I'm gonna trust that it will do what it says it will do. We're going to be flying directly over the airport. Still a little ways out. Directly over it and then basically making a loop back around on the far side.
Oh, it's now taking us to 3,000. Is it on VNAV? It is. It's uh, all interesting. I'm beginning to slow down a little more. I have a feeling with this weird loop we have to do over the airfield that we're going to want to be pretty slow so that we can maneuver. We have to leave ourselves enough room to make that maneuver. I think I have the airport in sight, maybe. Okay, that is our transition altitude, local barometer. Altitude. And Four Flight actually also just gave me that because it knows what the transition altitude is. So it's pretty smart. Yeah, I think the airport is straight ahead of us. And that runway is at a little bit of an angle. That makes sense. It's runway 3, 4. So it runs like in this direction. Back towards us and to the left. I think we want to fly at about 210 until we get over the airport and then we can slow down some more activate approach mode do the flaps uh, wait and wait to do the gear until we fully turned around and are on final um, but I, that's kind of what I'm aiming for I think 210 maybe even just above like 205 maybe throttle a little bit here because it doesn't have any auto throttle of course so keep it right around 200 I guess let's look at these that's cool So pretty much as soon as we get over the airport, we'll do flaps 15, and then when we do fly this strange loop that... It's really awkward on this procedure here. Really awkward looking. We go over it, past it, and then hopefully we do it that way around. I think that is the way we'll do it. Well, we'll see what happens. We go from... Mike, Papa Kilo to Delta, that, and then Mike, okay, yeah, so we fly over, make a right turn, and then a left turn coming back. That actually looks the most, uh, the least awkward on this somewhat awkward approach. I've noticed that a lot of the ILS approaches in Africa here are of that kind, or a lot of them are, because they're all based on a VOR, so you're flying over the the airport and then turning around while you're descending and capturing the glide slope. Now I'm hoping that the FMS does not do something weird as we fly over the airport. It's not going to try to do something funky. I think it, it definitely used to do that. That happened to us once when we flew over to uh, Mexico way in the beginning. Okay, I did change the nav one to the correct frequency, so that's good. We had it uh, dialed in just in case, but there's our runway. We can have a look as we fly over as well to see which way we're going to be uh, taxiing off and where we're going to be parking. So that's kind of nice about these type of approaches. We get to have a nice little look at it ahead of time, which is sort of what you would do if you're flying VFR. You want to have a look at the, the runway, make sure there's nothing weird going on. They haven't parked buses all over it. There's no kids playing soccer on it, you know, whatever. And they've got the lights on, which is good. 
Uh, looks like the terminal buildings will be off to the right of it uh, when we come in. We'll probably end up taking the second exit here. Uh, that looks like probably the general aviation parking. The first exit there looks more like the actual uh, like terminal, but we'll just go to the hangars over here. Let me activate approach mode. Okay, and it's switching us over to MP. Well, we are going to MPK, and next should be Delta 164 Echo. Perfect. Let's slow down a bit. I'm going to go flaps 15. Uh, this is what I was afraid of. Has it turned us around now on the localizer? It has, hasn't it? Yeah, so it does weird things. Because we had that on approach mode too early, it, uh... So we're going to fly this approach a little bit ourselves manually. It switched over and captured the localizer far too soon. Um, and tried to basically take us down already, like on that localizer. But we're not ready for that because we're literally just over the airport. So actually, let's, um, let's do this. We'll fly this ourselves with the heading mode. We'll go over to Mike Papakilo 4 and we'll swing around. We don't need to fly the whole approach, I don't think. We're already... Slowing down pretty decently here. We'll make the loop ourselves, and once we get back around, we'll turn the approach mode back on. At that point, we can capture the localizer and the glide slope, and we'll be sitting pretty. We just can't really do that uh, until we get around, because it was literally going to make us fly a 180 directly over the airport, and there was no way that was going to be a successful maneuver. So we'll fly in this direction a little bit. And we'll spin it around. You can see the green needle of the localizer, so we know which way we're going to end up going. We can also see it, of course, over here still, if I... You know. But the point is, at... at uh, at this one point there, you can see a little bit of green and pink text overlaying. That's where we're going to capture the glide slope, so we need to be kind of lined up nicely at that point, so we're not doing three things all at the same time. We're currently keeping this, maintaining this altitude a little slow. Let's go off into this direction. Doesn't look like we have any terrain to worry about, really, so we're going to fly in this direction a little bit, then we'll make a 180, a nice wide loop to the left, get ourselves established on the localizer, grab the glide slope, and before you know it, we're going to be having dinner. Don't you worry. Landing gear. 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 Fine, fine, fine. Just gotta keep the speed up a little. We don't want to drop below our approach speed here.
The airport is right beyond that one cloud there. Okay, let's see what happens if I turn approach mode back on. It should uh, should start turning us to the left to grab this uh, localizer thicken. We'll help it out a little bit in case it's not doing that by itself. We'll get ourselves over to that waypoint and then we'll hit approach again. See the runway over there? Localizer is armed. Let's hope it picks it up. We're just sort of at the outskirts of it. That's exactly what I was hoping for. Perfect. My approach checklist is complete. Yep, we're all good. Just gonna go. This should just sort itself out here on the localizer, and we should. Glycelope is armed, which we'll pick up at the next point. Just ahead of us there. At least that is the general idea. That is what's supposed to happen here. See the green diamond from the glide slope, like it's right there, and it is slowly moving down as we get closer. We have now captured it. It is green, it is going down. I'm just gonna pull back on the throttle a bit because it is gonna speed us up, of course, as we descend. And we are now on localizer and glide slope, and we're at the right speed. Gear is down, flaps are deployed. All checklists are complete. We are ready to land.
Nice view. Not really on the center line, but that was a pretty smooth landing. I'm pretty happy with that. I don't know where the nearest exit is. It's right here. There we go. There's just a light hanging here in midair, or whatever that is. It's weird. So there's the parking lot that we were talking about earlier. So just some hangers. The actual terminal seems to be over here, but we're just going to get ourselves a parking spot over here. We see any flag personnel around. There are some people here directly to our side. Saw that car from above earlier. Fuel truck. Actually, let's follow this. Maybe we can get over to the terminal from here. It looks like we can. Couldn't quite see that clearly if I'm up above. Maybe not. Uh, we'll just, uh, I think this will be as good a parking spot as any here, coming up. Just at the end of this uh, yellow line here. Get ourselves parked in one of these hangars on our right here. Alright. That looks pretty good. I'm okay with that. Get all that shut off. All these shut off. All that's shut off. It's time to get outside. Put the lights in the cabin on still, but we are here. We have landed. Very nice flight, actually. Pretty decent landing, had to do a little bit of uh, gymnastics with the approach mode, but that's always kind of actually fun. And that'll do it for the flight. Next flight is going to be to Cameroon, I th think. I think. Let me have a quick look. Our next flight will be obviously from here to Foxtrot Kilo Yankee Sierra. which is in, yeah, Cameroon. So that's that will be the next fight. Until then, take care of yourselves. Be good to each other. See you later.